fine. Uh, sorry for that small network glitch. I hope you're all fine. Uh, as usual, uh, my name is Boa Patrick. Uh, together with my uh, admin, Mr. Chairs, a very good man uh, who is going to be uh, directing us. Um, before we can start, uh, let me choose someone to lead us in a prayer. Uh, let me show here, Rita. Uh, yes, Rita. Uh, Rita, you're going to lead us in a prayer. Okay. Let's harm ourselves for the word of prayer. Our kind and loving Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you've given unto us. Lord, we dedicate this lesson into your hands. May you please guide us and let us understand each and everything that our teacher is going to teach may we be may may you please enable us to be good children so that we do and everything that our teacher will be telling us to do lord guide us and bless us in jesus name i have prayed amen amen thank you very much rita for that beautiful prayer uh, as you are well aware and i think uh, Mr. Charles must have talked about it. Uh, this is our last week of learning under Edify, like normal lessons. Uh, because uh, next week we are going to be beginning our exams. And as I speak now, your exam is ready. Uh, the budget lesson is ready. And um, uh, of course, as a way of preparing you for that exam, I am going to use the first 30 minutes of our lesson uh, to review a little bit, even for some of you who are not here, uh, when we are learning, then the last minutes we shall end with, uh, what the last 30 minutes we shall end with what we are supposed to be learning today, okay? Uh, that's what I chose, just for the sake of uh, examinations. Uh, but before I can start, I'm seeing there are some people who have questions. There is uh, a group of people, Roland, Beth, Chris, Isaac. Yes, Isaac, which, quest which question are you having? Roland uh, and Beth, which question are you having? <laughs> which question are you having? Oh, we are wanted break. Hey, okay. Uh, I think those ones just wanted to pray. Uh, let me meet them. Uh, okay, let us uh, begin. Uh, now, when we are starting this top, uh, this topic, we did what we call. Sorry. We did. Uh, we began with uh, life processes, okay, and then from life processes under life processes, we had to look at uh, uh, being able to identify different life processes. For example, in this picture here, you can see uh, this was nutrition as a life process whereby the lion was feeding on this zebra. Uh, this was not a life process because it's just water. It's just a waterfall. Okay. There's no life process here. Then from there, uh, I gave you this picture where I was asking you which kind of life process is this? And I remember by then, uh, some of you were able to identify uh, sensitivity. Uh, then some people were saying uh, movement. And we said, yeah both of them can work, uh, movement and sensitivity, okay? And then you must be able to know uh, that life processes, that, that life process and the importance of that kind of life process, okay? Uh, for example, if it, is, if it is movement, then it's going to enable the animal to look for food in the environment. Then also it can enable animals to escape from predator, uh, from the environment as well. Um, and then um, from there, 
we went on to, for some of you, I'm reviewing what we did. We went on to look at that other life process in picture A, which was sensitivity because the man was handling a hot saucepan. It burnt him, so he was able to sense and then he let it go. Uh, so that was sensitivity. Uh, one of the functions that we were able to look at uh, was... Um, <laughs> Okay, so one of the functions of uh, this sensitivity is that you are able to detect danger in the environment, because if you can't sense or detect danger in the environment, then you can easily die. So that's the importance of this life process. Then we went on to look at another life process, uh, this one, which was reproduction. Uh, because with reproduction, it's going to enable organisms to multiply in nature and in the environment. And you can see this way are laying eggs. Uh, this is uh, a male cockroach on the back and a female cockroach, uh, uh, the one which is in front. So as the female, as the male, female cockroach uh, produces palms, the male cockroach sheds, sorry, as the female cockroach produces the eggs or lays the eggs, the male cockroach sheds sperms on it and then the eggs are fertilized, then you can have uh, tadipoles. Then from there, uh, we also looked at uh, that other life process. Um, okay. So from there, we also looked at that other life process, which is nutrition. You can see that boy was eating. For some of you have just joined us, I am reviewing very fast uh, the first lessons which we had. Uh, so don't say that uh, we are repeating. Uh -uh. I'm just uh, reviewing. So then that was the D was the life process, which was uh, respiration and then growth and then excretion in F. This car was excreting. Then we went on to summarize the life processes in an acronym, which is Mrs. Granny where M stands for movement, R stands for respiration, S stands for sensitivity, G stands for growth, R stands for reproduction, E stands for uh, excretion, and N stands for nutrition. Uh, so there are seven, and you can uh, always remember them as Mrs. Grain. Those are the different life processes. Then I also gave you this uh, wadi puzzle of identifying different life processes whereby uh, some students were able to detect that there was this word sensitivity, uh, there was growth here, that is when you're moving from left to right, there was excretion, there was respiration, uh, there was movement, that was movement there. So we did this puzzle um, uh, very, very fast. Then from there, uh, we looked at plants and animals, being able to differentiate uh, between plants and animals. And then also, we, I said to you that it can be difficult or impossible to observe certain life processes, like in pictures or in the book. So in this case, uh, I would guide uh, students. For example, if you're looking at a plant or this animal, the grasshopper, insane so are you able to see it feed sometimes you can be able to see it are you able to see it move yes you can do it see it move what about sensing what about excreting so all those ones then there was this activity of integration i think we didn't look at it so much in detail but normally these activities of integration they uh they're about um applying biology in nature and how you can use it in your daily life. And this is uh, an activity of integration, which you can get in the textbook, biology textbook, which Mr. Charles Otto, uh, Mr. Charles Otto shared uh, that textbook in Google Classroom. So uh, it's a very good book. Uh, this is where I picked that activity which you can always try out.
laptop um, just in your free time. Then we went on to look at the summary. That was a summary. Uh, also different life processes uh, and that there are seven life processes that enable living organisms to survive. Then we went on to cells, to look at cells, whereby under cells, uh, we had to look at uh, the definition of a cell. You should be able to identify the parts of a typical plant and animal cell, especially, and I want to repeat this, especially, especially from prepared slides, okay? And uh, those pictures, I put them so that we could be able to identify cells on these babies. Are you able to see their cells? Where are they? Or this plant? Are you able to see this plant's cells? Okay, that's where I put it. Uh, and then Sobra is saying that I tried to download, but it failed. I think you mean the book. Uh, I don't know, you could use, I don't know what did you use to download. Um, because it is there, it is downloadable. Uh, maybe at the end of this session, Mr. Chaz may show you uh, how uh, you could be able to download it again. And I think Mr. Chaz has a uh, website. It, you could also pick it from there in case you can't uh, get it from, from Google Classroom. Then also explain the structure of specialized cells. You should be able to explain the structure of specialized cells. But now we were not able to reach specialized cells because of time, because this, uh, this program is ending very soon. And that's why we have not reached uh, to look at uh, specialized cells. Then distinguishing the different levels of organization. So today, the main lesson for this is going to be about distinguishing uh, levels of cell organization. Then from there, I was able to show you uh, relate building a structure like a wall of a house with cells because a cell is a building block of life. And that's why like for some of you understand Luganda, they translate that word cell as akatofari. Akatofari is a Luganda word which means a brick. And uh, when we are calling a cell in Luganda, we call it akatofari because it's a brick that builds the structures or the bodies of living organisms. And that's why I put this wall to show you that cells are the bricks or the building blocks of life. And uh, I even put this picture of uh, the skin to try and zoom in. If you can look at your skin critically well, you could see partitions which could represent certain cells. But of course, this, these cells of the skin are a little bit unique since there are, there are some other features added to them and that's why you're able to see them like this. And that structure is called keratin, uh, which is added to them. And then, uh, and then we went on to look at uh, the plant and animal cell, that if you're to look at a plant and animal cell, you need a microscope. And there's a handout which I shared again in Google Classroom about the microscope. It's, it was a branches of biology and microscopy, uh, where we looked at the different parts of the microscope and how we use a microscope and how to determine magnification using a microscope. So you can see these are students in Uganda. These are students in Uganda who are looking at plant cells. Here they were looking at cells of flowers um, using the microscope in the lab. And then also um, we, we, we were able to, to use an egg uh, to, to represent to, to you how an animal cell actually looks like. And then this is the picture of chick cells. This is a picture of chick cells. For example, they could pick your cells from your chicks, amatama. They could pick your cells from your chicks, which are called amatama and you are able to see them like this after adding a dye. This is how they look like, okay? And you can see that they have that cell membrane. You can see the cytoplasm. Uh, you can see the nucleus. If I can show you, this is nucleus, that's uh, that dark, dark spot. Then those extremely tiny, tiny 
kind of dot like structures those are mitochondria uh, those tiny tiny dark structures those are mitochondria uh, which uh, generate energy for the cell so in other words a cell will have a cell membrane uh, cell membrane uh, cell membrane a cell will also have a nucleus a nucleus a cell will also have those tiny tiny structures uh, which you can call mitochondria mitochondria actually if it is one it is mitochondria only uh, because it is one then cytoplasm cytoplasm those structures must always be there cytoplasm in an animal cell um seeing nazizi fatuma has a question nazizi uh, fatuma what is your question is mitochondria found in every animal cell very good it is that's true it is there in every animal cell because it is the one that generates energy for the for every animal cell Is that clear, Fatuma? Okay. Uh, okay. We could, if you you advance with biology, these all these are prepared slides uh, of uh, of different cells, and we could give it to you. So when you give you this slide, you place it in the microscope, and then you are able to see uh, the cells like that. You could see, for example, this picture. These are cells. Okay, and uh, I could. Uh, I'm seeing more questions here. Akram. Akram, you have a question? Akram? What is a cell? Uh, Akram, I don't know whether you've just come in. <laughs> I had really talked to what a cell is. Okay. Uh, a cell, I had already talked about it. Um, uh, is Ngoma, you want to answer that? Is Ngoma, Emma? Yes, teacher. A cell is the smallest basic unit of life. Please answer, Akram. Yeah, a cell is the smallest. A cell is a smallest basic unit of life. Okay, thank you very much, Emma. The, uh, the smallest oh. basic unit of, of life. Or even if you say the building block of life. Shadia, you have a different question? No, I have another answer for a cell. Okay, please tell us, Shadia. A cell is a tiny building living block for living organism. Okay, thank you very much, Shadia. A tiny, microscopic, smallest, all those words uh, you can use. You can use them for that. Uh, and then we are able to look at this. It's a simple cell with cytoplasm, nucleus, and cell membrane, then uh, mitochondria. And you must know, and I repeat, you must know the different functions for every part of this cell. And then Isingoma is uh, asking, define protoplasm. Um, now, Isingoma, uh, you don't need to complicate life for your friends. Protoplasm, simply you just have to look at the living contents within uh, the cell. So when you look at that jelly structures and all the living contents there, we call them protoplasts. 
they are called protoplasts. Those, all those different structures, which we call cell organelles that are surrounded by a cell membrane, they are called protoplasts. And then the jelly-like fluid within where these contents are is the protoplasm. And then looking at uh, viewing, we're able to see, again, we use a microscope. And then they could also give you this structure of uh, a plant cell. These are many plant cells and they can uh, tell you to identify them, okay? And then uh, you label, you, you, you label them. Uh, okay, then we can continue uh, looking at, again, that, looking at the different parts of a uh, plant cell, uh, the cell wall providing support, chloroplast, photosynthesis, vacuole, storage of food and wastes. Now, all these ones we did the previous weeks, and that's why I'm not, uh, I'm not overspending time there, okay? And then I think I remember we did also that quiz. Uh, now we can now begin, I think we also started on this cellular organization. I remember last week we, looking, we looked at that a cell being the smallest component of structures that build up life. Yeah, when you're having many cells, they form a tissue. Now this tissue could form an organ. Then uh, when many organs are coordinating together, they form what we call an organ system, uh, together which are all found uh, in a full organism. And I think I remember last week, I used an example of the toilet paper when I was demonstrating what I mean by cell and tissue and organ. Then uh, still, the levels of organizations that are found bo in both plants and animals. So plants have cells, animals have cells. Plants have tissues made up of many plant cells. Also animals have tissues made up of many animal cells. Now these tissues could form an organ like a flower, a leaf, a root, a stem. So that's an organ in a plant. Then you could, in animals, tissues could form an organ like uh, a heart, intestines, stomach, liver, like that. I'm seeing I'm having many questions here. Uh, let me pick some few questions. Uh, Chimera, you have a question? Do cells die? Yes, please, Chimera, cells can die. They do come die. And then uh, Nachitend, Nachitend has gone off. Uh, then uh, Diana. Yes, Diana. And Laurie. Yes, people. Yes. Is tonoplast a necessary part of the cell? That surrounding of the vacuum. Yes, Diana. I say yes. that is tonoplast a necessary part of the animal. Of the... Yes, that is true, Diana. Tonoplast is a very important structure on the plant cell. What is its function? And, uh, we have just said that uh, it is for storage of sugars and sometimes wastes. And okay. the plant cells are. It's around the vacuum, right? It's around the vacuum, right? Yes, say so that uh, contents within the vacuole don't escape into the cytoplasm. Oh, is it only found in plants or it's in both animal and plants? Good. Yes, teacher. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay, then uh, Fabian, you have a question? Fabian K. And before leave with that, uh, Fabian K has uh, failed to unmute, then uh, let me choose. Okay. Fabian is asking, can people live without cells? <laughs> uh, Fabian, can I ask you a question? Can a house 
exist without bricks? No. no. So that is the same question you are asking because cells build up people. If you lose all your cells, it means you disappear. You can't exist. Okay. Uh, and then Isaiah, you have a question. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Opoi. Yes. You have a question? I'm seeing your hand is up. Mm -hmm. Isaiah has no question. Uh, Patrick, Patrick, you have a question? Patrick? Does latex have cells? Does what? Latex have cells. Okay, thank you for that question, Patrick. A latex, for some of you who don't know latex, latex is called in Luganda a masanda. A, that sap that certain plants produce uh, is called a masanda. Now latex is a, is a, is a structure. It's a structure. It's a carbohydrate, it's a structure which is like starch, which is like um, uh, cellulose. Those are structures, they are not cells per se. Okay. So that masanda uh, is not a cell. And that's just like starch is used to make, like uh, starch is made, you can push it, that push is starch actually. So you cannot say that posho is cells, their cells no. So likewise, uh, latex masanda, uh, they can be used to make rubbers and all those other things, tires, like that. So they are not cells. Then um, let me choose the last person and then we continue. Uh, when you're done with your question, please put down your hand so that you don't confuse. Uh, Nazizi Fatuma. Excuse me, sir. Do all cells for, are all cells for reproduction? Yes. Uh, no, 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 Fatuma. Not all cells are for reproduction. Cells, which we call gametes, that is the sperm and egg. And we're supposed to start about those cells and specialized cells but because of time and this program has ended we may not reach there but Excellent. these are the cells which we call somatic cells that the ones that make up our bodies they can also produce other cells but not for reproduction excuse me teacher yes does air does air contain cells Okay, um, thank you for that question. Uh, really? uh, air is a mixture of gases, but just like water, water is just, it's can come from like cells growing in water. A, for example, paramecia, um, amoeba, you can find them growing in water. Uh, maybe when you're looking at that, also there are certain bacteria uh, which could be in air, but air as air is a mixture of gases. So, but certain bacteria could exist in air, and even spores, even pollen grains can be there, and all those even dust can be in air. Dust in full food it could be in air, but it is not part of air. Just like water could have those impurities. Uh, let me end with a comfort, favor. Yes, comfort, favor, and gift. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. When you're bathing, do the cells go with the water? When you are bathing, do the cells go with water? Some, yes. Some cells may may peel off, uh, and and some of, some of the dead cells you may wash them away with water and soap but not all cells otherwise if we were because you have been showering since you are born by now you would have wasted away if all cells would go away with water but it's only a few dead ones that may be washed away with water okay and then uh, in the okay teacher. 
the chat box Chloe Drusilla is asking, teacher, is water a cell? Mess water, amazi. Uh, its chemical composition is, we continue. Winnie and Winnie Pie. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Does, uh, does our hair have cells? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Win, for that question. Uh, does our hair have cells? Hair, uh, for some of you who don't know hair, uh, hair is the one which you find on your head. Uh, for some people, especially the adolescents, it may begin growing in the armpits, uh, as well as on some on the hands and legs, and even in the private parts. That's what we call hair. Now, hair um, uh, is produced by actually cells. They are hair follicles within the skin that produce, it's, a, it's protein, they're protein. Uh, and um, it's, there's a component in it also, which is keratin uh, in, 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 in air, hair. Yeah, and that's why, because proteins can be denatured by high temperatures, when you use temperature, high temperatures on hair, it, it, it folds. And that's why people long time ago used to do what we call hot combing. They use a hot comb and they pass that and then denatures the proteins in the, in the hair. So uh, I think you've gotten it. Uh, let us now first continue. I'm seeing people have very many questions. Uh, Sobra is asking, teacher, do insects have cells? Yes, even insects have cells. Uh, Penny is asking, some boys don't bathe, so they don't waste a lot of cells. Uh, it's not only boys that don't bathe, uh, as, which could, I don't know if they've ever seen, like you put on a shirt and there's that, that. Uh, part of that that are uh, that is cells which are dead. So you need to keep on washing away on your skin. They could lead to certain infections, and you could be attacked by certain. And, uh, which may want to feed on them. And even lice, which may want to reside on those dead cells, it is good to but you wash them away. Um, essentially, it's a issue of function, different layers, and they organize differently. You form an organ, and when you're having many organs coordinating, like in this kind of circuitous system, then you can find them in an organism. I'm seeing questions are just increasing. There's this one with, with the E. Uh, yes, which question do you have? E? Okay, uh, and then Jenna. Yes, Jenna, you have a question? Uh, when you fail to un unmute, I choose another person. We have Aura. Aura, what's your question? What's a, a tissue? Pardon? What is a tissue? Uh, or I would just say that when you're having a group of cells performing a particular function, that is a tissue. It's what about an organ? Uh, or um, we are going to reach there. Um, when you're having many tissues, because I, I want you guys to, I don't want you to just cram definitions because uh, for some people, they may not have that power to cram or to do. This picture should actually be able to let you know the definition for everything here. Uh, for the starters, when you're having one cell, that is the building uh, block of life. So you are seeing that one cell is the one that builds uh, this organism because every part 
growth of this organism here is a cell. So when you are having a, a cell, it's going to be the basic unit of life. Then when you're having many cells that are performing a particular function, for example, muscle, muscle cells, muscle, muscle tissue has many cells that enable, uh, enable the muscles to contract and relax when lifting certain objects like in an organism. Then when you're having layers of tissues organized, uh, they could form an organ, okay? And then when you're having uh, uh, different organs working together, that's an organ system. So you should be seeing everything here. Um, then I'm seeing very many questions still here. Abi says that if the cells die, does the person die? If all the cells die on your body, automatically you can't survive, you also die. Because, for example, if your brain cells die, you die. Because the brain cells are the ones to think for you, they're the ones to interpret information, they're the ones to coordinate certain processes within the body. So if they are dead, automatically you're also dead. Uh, Tina is asking, are pimples worn out cells or all nature? Uh, pimples, pimples normally grow in faces, especially of adolescents, okay? Uh, pimples have <laughs> certain structures on your, on your skin, which produce certain oils, okay? Uh, sometimes when those pores are blocked, uh, that oil is called sebum. If it, if it, if it accumulates uh, uh, under the cell or in those powers, that's when you can develop that pimple. Okay, so you can't call it uh, a cell and you can't say that it's dead. It's oil, uh, sebum. Julia is asking, uh, um, Michaela is asking, if the cells are damaged, what happens? Depends on which type of cells that are damaged. But for example, when you get a cut, then uh, a clot must be formed so that blood does not continue spreading out. Uh, and if certain cells are damaged, they produce chemicals within the body that alerts the body and you begin feeling pain. So it depends. There are so many things that could happen. Then Julia is asking what, what would cause the death of cells? Many things, you could burn it using a candle, you could use a chemical, you could, there are so many things. Like you guys, you are made up, you are multicellular organisms, you are made up of many cells. So what could kill part of your body? Uh, because when you look at, at your hands, you are looking at your cells. When you're looking at your legs, you are looking at your cells. Sometimes you can even be chewing meat and you bite your uh, cheek or tongue. You are, you are biting your cells. Uh, and as this Fatima is asking, I thought cells die and replace. Yes, cells on our bodies have lifespans. For example, the red blood cells spend uh, about 120 days before they can die. So cells die and the body replaces them. That is true. And then uh, Faith Fedres is asking, teacher, some people don't develop pimples. Is it a disorder? No, it's not a disorder. Uh, it depends on, uh, on, on someone's skin. Some people's skin produce a lot of oil, whereas others produce less oil, okay? And even hormonal imbalances could bring about development of pimples. Uh, um, and then teacher, when, teacher, even when you apply smearing oil that you are not used to pimples come, or is it like that, especially lotion? Uh, through with certain oils that are secreted out of your body. Now, when you use certain lotions, there are chemicals in those lotions which may interact with your skin and your skin react uh, and by producing a rash or developing more pimples or sometimes you could have blocked the, the pores because Vaseline, uh, people, people got it badly. Vaseline was made for a purpose. It's made for a purpose that there are some people whose skin dries. And once it dries so hard, 
it can easily crack and um, you could get wounds, especially for people. Now, if your skin produces natural oil, it wouldn't even be good that you even smear yourself with Vaseline. You say that people got it that you have to smear Vaseline, you have to smear. But what is the purpose of Vaseline? You get it. It's not that everyone must smear Vaseline. So get it from today. Then, um, uh, and then Diana is asking, is sebum dangerous and where does it come from? It's not, it's our bodies that produce it. It's oil, natural, like some people's bodies produce natural oils, which are supposed to, 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 to make, to lubricate the cells of the skin so that they don't peel, so that they don't peel. So it is made by the body naturally. So that, and that's why I'm saying that if your skin is a capable of producing that oil, you don't need Vaseline, okay? Because Vaseline was made for those people whose skin easily dries and it can even crack. Saying what would cause the death of all cells? There are so many things. So you mean people who suck their fingers, suck cells. A finger, you could look at a finger as an organ of a sort. Because it's made up of many cells that make the skin inside there is a tissue of blood, there are bones. So you get it. And then what happens to cells when a person dies? Of course, <laughs> the, the cells also die. I think would they even uh, be there? Okay, many people are okay, the many people are actually asking so many questions. I'm reading so many questions here that you guys have even made me not to continue. Uh, teacher, you said that our skins are made of cells. If an insect bites our skins, do the cells die? It depends. If they bite that particular cell, it could die. And no, uh, uh, it could die if it has been bitten by it. But of course, it can be replaced. Isaiah is asking, when a person dies, what do, they, what do cells feed on? If a person is dead, the, the cells no longer feed, so the person begins uh, decaying or kuvunda. Uh, a person begins decaying because the cells are no longer feeding. Uh, Kasuti is asking, teacher, can too much uh, squat exercises kill cells? I don't know what you mean <laughs> by squat exercises uh, killing cells. Maybe some of you have not yet understood what a cell is. Picture, um, how can I put it? You guys have houses at home. That wall of yours at home is made up of many bricks. When you remove off one brick from the wall, does the wall collapse? It doesn't. Actually, you can even replace it with a better brick. You see that? And unless you remove all the bricks, that's when you can say uh, that. I think some of you are not getting it. And that's why I'm, I, I see uh, there are some questions which show that maybe people have not understood what a cell is. Uh, Michaela is asking, sometimes you use Vaseline, you're not used to, and you get pimples. That's what I've said. Vaseline contain certain chemicals of which certain skins react with such chemicals. I don't know whether when you, if you heard of uh, doctors advising people not to take certain medicines because they contain certain components, because certain components react with different people differently. So that is the same thing. Uh, does overdoing exercise destroy cells? Uh, no, I don't want to say that it destroys cells because unless a cell has been cut or, or ruptured, no, it doesn't. Then uh, Chloe is asking, teacher, is a virus a cell? No, a virus is not a cell. A virus is uh, a, just a structure. It can't even reproduce. It can't produce more viruses unless inside the cell. So a virus is not a cell. Uh, Fatima is asking, teacher, it means us who leak our blood are cell. Eh? Our blood are cells. I cut myself, I leak blood cells. 
uh, that's not good to keep on leaking your blood, uh, my friend. Um, blood contains a lot of cells, that is true. I say blood is a tissue that is made up of many cells. And then I'm asking, the baby is also in cells from breast milk. Uh, breast milk contains proteins, sugars, uh, they are not cells actually, sugars, unless you, the baby has bites, maybe the nipple of the mom, that's when maybe they can swallow the cells after biting the nipples. But if not mm. that, no. Then Patrick is asking who have cells. Um, Now, hooves, someone means amayembe, hooves. Uh, those are different structures, uh, just like your nails. Uh, you can compare hooves to your nails, the way they are made. And then Abdullah is asking, teacher, last week I asked a question and you said you will answer this. Uh, then you say dogs give birth. Eh? Dogs give birth three or two times a year, and more than the humans are too big in number compared to dogs. It uh, doesn't concern cells, but in summary, I can tell you that humans take care of their young ones well. Okay, when a, a baby gets sick, you find the mother taking the kid to a hospital. They vaccinate even that baby so that he's, he or she is not attacked by certain viruses and bacteria. Victor, so all those ones are going to protect, all those ones are going to protect the baby from dying. But a dog is not going to vaccinate the puppies. Sometimes even the dog has no food to give to the puppies. So all those ones contribute. There are so many things which may contribute. Joe, to, bring that cab. Uh, let me mute all these people. There, there's so many things which could lead to uh, death of those puppies. Okay. Uh, there are so many questions in the chat box. I don't know why today there are many questions. Uh, teacher, what if we are sick? What do they do in our bodies? Who? The cells? I don't know what you mean. Uh, do women lose cells when they menstruate? Yes. Yes, uh, there is a tissue uh, which is called endometrium in the uterus of the woman. So um, those tissues are made when undergoes menstruation. Those, uh, those cells die and they peel off and they come out as blood droplets during menstruation. So they do those cells. Uh, do, teacher, do cells die when we catch on the walls of the house? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> like cells of your fingers? No, they don't. <laughs> and then Desire is asking, teacher, do cells help us when we are sick? Yes, they help you so much. Some cells try to fight. For example, if you have white blood cells, they fight those viruses or bacteria that are trying to make you sick. They do help us. Uh, then Makela is asking, sometimes your mouth gets dry and you pinch it and then blood comes out. Uh, there are cells on our lips. Yes, they are cells. And when you pluck up or you pinch or pluck, you are removing cells. Those are cells. Uh, then Faith is asking, can our cells fall sick? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, your cells can fall sick. <laughs> okay, I think we can continue. Uh, no. We can continue and uh, look at the tissue. You guys have asked many questions and uh, uh, today we are supposed to, look, to begin from this tissue. Uh, a tissue is a group of similar cells linked together to perform a particular function, as I said. And you can see this is a, a picture of a sink and this is real blood that had powered in the sink. 
Now, just one sample of blood, just this small sample, it could contain many cells, up to more than 100 cells. And that's why our bodies are made up of trillions of cells, okay? Uh, they are made up of trillions of cells. Uh, that is true. And um, also, a tissue may be made up of single type of cells or comprised of different types uh, of cells. Uh, for example, blood tissue. So blood is a tissue, like you can see, because there are many, many cells. Now in this sample, you could find white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, macrophages. There are so many types of cells here. Also nervous tissue, nerves. Uh, I could I can call nerves as kind of electrical wires. That is in a Lebanese language. Call them electrical wires, which transport electricity within your body, which is in form of impulses. Okay, so that's how I can put it in simple terms. Then the muscular tissue are made up of muscle cells, which can cause movement of body parts. I think that is very clear. Then Grace is asking, are there dangers? Uh, Grace is asking, I know Abdallah is asking, teacher, is there a way of regaining cells? If you lose them, for example, when women menstruate, can they gain? Yes, our bodies can produce more cells. And there's a process which we shall study of uh, in the future. It's called mitosis. Our bodies can produce new cells when they, the others are, are dead. Then Grace is asking, are there dangers of having not enough cells? Yes. For example, if you don't have enough red blood cells in your body, uh, you're going to be weak. Uh, you get them, a disease, there's a condition called anemia. Uh, there's a condition called anemia. That is, you, you feel weak, your, your eyes turn yellow, mm, uh, whereby you don't have enough energy, your body can't carry out enough, uh, it can't use oxygen very well because you have less red blood cells. And then Arina is asking, um, why do some skins change color like you find a person with the two colors at once? <laughs> like which people, maybe some people bleach their skin uh, and it's not good to bleach. So such people, Arinda, who bleach their skin are the ones who, who you're going to find with different colors. Uh, Prudy is asking, do the albinos have many cells in their body or is it that they lack some cells? Uh, no, albinos, they have the same cells as we do have cells, but there is a, a certain component that their cells can't produce. A chirungo, there is a certain component which I can call ingredient which their body can't produce. It's called melanin. Uh, their cells cannot produce melanin, but they have, they have their normal people like we, uh, like any other person, uh, and they have no, it's just that their body can't produce uh, melanin. Uh, then leukemia, I don't know the spelling. Uh, leukemia, are you talking about blood cancer? Or both is asking if, we are left with about four minutes, uh, let me just look at these questions very fast. Abbas is asking, if you don't have enough white blood cells, your body can't fight diseases. That is true. And then Patrick is asking, if a person has sexual intercourse with a dog, does the new organism contain both human and dog cells? Uh, that's not, that can't be possible. Uh, if a person ever has sexual intercourse with a dog, they can never produce a baby. A baby can't come out. Uh, and then uh, both is saying albinos miss melanin. Yes, that is true. Uh, their bodies don't have melanin. Uh, let me just choose two people and then we, we are left with two minutes. Uh, Prudy, you have a question? Uh, okay, there's no any other question. Um, blessing is saying that, teacher, if you send these notes to the Google Classroom, yes, they'll be there. Teacher, what can we do to increase sales? 
it depends on which kind of sales you want. Otherwise, uh, it has been a wonderful discussion with you people. Uh, we can end here unless the admin Charles. Uh, let me see if admin is still here. Uh, Charles, admin, are you still there? Mr. Charles Oh, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you for the lesson I've been following about the tissues and thanks for people who have been asking questions. I like it so much and you answer them appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you talk about the, 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 the website, it's okay. Uh, I think mm -hmm. Teacher Bumba also, you will help me. I'm going to transform these notes of yours into, mm -hmm. into lessons so that when the kids, they go to the website. I remember showing them some websites at the beginning mm -hmm. of this lesson. So we want them mm -hmm. to continue studying. So I'll be making senior one lessons, especially from their teachers. I'll be putting it in form of lessons. I put some videos. And some quizzes will also come at the end, like the quizzes that you are showing. Now they'll be doing it.